Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try and drop the needle in the right place. And then you can guess what song this is. Mm -hmm. This should be fun. Got it. Woo! So, this is a classic Triumph song. We recorded this in 1979. It became a, a, a signature song for us. It uh, really created kind of a formula. Uh, in some ways with the quiet intro and then it grooves, uh, big drums, a little bit of harmony here and there. Uh, when we played this song live, it created a, an incredible vibe in the audience. And when we get to the guitar solo, I'm not going to talk because it's one of the best guitar solos that you'll ever hear. Uh, it just sets up the, the rest of the song because when you construct a song, you need an intro, you need verses, you need a bridge, and of course, the choruses. Uh, without a chorus, you got no song, but without an intro, you don't have a song either. Uh, recording this song was uh, very, very easy, actually. And speaking of recording songs, here's the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Um, <coughs> Rick, Rick cut the vocal, I think, in one take. Um, it was relatively uh, painless to record except for the drums because Gil hated his drum sound. And we didn't do this at Metalworks. We did it at a place called um, Sounds Interchange, which was in downtown Toronto on Richmond Street. Mike Jones was the engineer, a great guy. He passed away recently. It was very sad, sad for us because we worked, he worked on a lot of Triumph albums. Um, but it's the way, you know, we all live and then we all go away. And it's all, it's what you do in that, in that time space that's important. Uh, live, again, the, this song was really cool to play because the audience, the chorus, we used to break it down and the audience would go sing right along with the lay it on the lines. It was uh, fans in the air. Uh, way too much fun. Uh, recording, this is from the Just a Game album. I think uh, that, uh, you know, we weren't, heavily into liquor oh maybe we were um <laughs> or drugs uh, sometimes but uh th on that album it was kind of cool because uh, we we all spoke up and did a, a kind of a jazzy song it was <laughs> late at night oh here's a guitar solo i'm gonna air guitar in a little bit rick played his ass off it was, it was so cool Oh, beautiful. Here we go. <laughs> and I love the bass line on this, too, because I play bass. <laughs> okay, here we go. End of solo. Wow. Killer. Um, rock Radio played the heck out of that song. Uh, Top 40 actually started to play it, and then uh, payola stopped happening in the United States. <laughs> so the record died on the vine, because without payola, you didn't have a hit record. Um, uh, but neither here nor there. Alm Radio was our, our, our main source of uh, exposure, and they did a heck of a job for us. Uh, from this album on, actually, this is when they first took Triumph under their wings, so to speak. And uh, the rest became history, certainly at radio level, and allowed us to graduate really from playing theaters uh, to playing arenas. And it was, uh, it was a great progression, which kind of doesn't exist in the, in the music business anymore because if you don't have a hit in your first record, within 30 minutes, the record company doesn't care. They drop you and you have no chance. So we were lucky enough to be around where you had lots of chances, as long as you showed growth. And that's really the whole story about this song. Rick Rubin, producer extraordinaire who was working with us at the time on the Raisin Hell album, he walks into the studio and he goes, Hey guys, what's up? We say, yo, we're getting ready to make this record. And Rick goes, oh, you know what? That's Aerosmith. You know who those guys are? And he was like, what are you talking about? Again, this part, I always en envisioned the video, so I brought props today. Because now t TV's, uh, radio's on TV now. So the original bone of the original Strange Animal video, which is basically how you could get your song heard back then, was to get it on TV first.